morning, brothers and sisters. I know there's a funeral this morning, so I was, I'm watching the clock. The soul of this person who's been buried, that we'll, I'll be over in the, in the pastoral center afterwards. Just tell you a little bit about what, you know, this morning's talk is Father Pablo give the beautiful teaching at the homily. Uh, the readings weren't chosen by us, they were chosen by the Universal Church. So every part of the world hears the, these two beautiful testimonies of mercy and how God defends his people in, in their own sinfulness because he loves us so much. So this morning, uh, Father Pablo spoke about that, and I'm going to speak a little further on it. And then afterwards, oh, by the way, I'm sitting down because I'm getting old. And I, the legs aren't the best, you know. I got healed, and I got all kinds of miracles. But there's one thing I tell you all, you grow old. And, you know, people ask me, can I make people young? And so, well, you can go get a facelift and all those other things, but you're going to get old no matter what you do and so I'm getting old but I'm in good health thank God and Father Kevin that worked with me as you know from Fermanagh Vincentian he was 83 when he died and I tell you he always prayed don't want to be lying in an old home I don't want to lose my mind he would give the Lord all the reasons that he wanted a fast exit and he got it I he went to bed on Sunday night and I found him on Monday morning dead in, in uh, Florida where we worked out of the office there. We have uh, an office there as well as my convent. So, why did I tell you that? Because the Lord sent me then, Father Pablo. Isn't he a great gift? He's from Spain. He's, I could be his mother, which is great, because I told his mother, don't worry, I won't run away with him, because I'm, <laughs> I'm older, much older. But he's such a gift, and we've been in, in the two and a half years we have ministered, we've been in over 23 countries <clears throat> with bishops, priests, thousands of people all over Asia, and of course with Europe and with the intercession uh, for priests. So, anyway, aside, after my, after my talk, I'll be over at the um, pastoral center. Now, let me explain to you. There's only one of me and people say to me, sister, could I have 10 minutes of your time? And if you multiply that with all the people who want, it's impossible. I'd be dead. But I do, I make the effort because I love ministering. And if God gives me the opportunity, what I tell people, I speak a lot in the Eucharist. And you'll see during these days, we'll be telling lots of beautiful teachings on healing and the power of the Eucharist. But... I'd be over there and I'd sit at a table like this and if you'd like just, if you have, you know, a need or if you'd like to come, I will uh, just say a brief prayer. You don't have to tell me anything. Jesus knows us so well. So I do it like what King, the late King Goodwin used to say to me. I, I knew him very well and he asked me to pray over his hands and he said, because every hand I shake, I ask Jesus to touch. And I thought, what a beautiful thing. And I, whom God has given me a ministry in the healing ministry as well as my work with priests. So uh, when I shake hands with people and I say a brief prayer, I know Jesus listens. I know that, that what you are asking for, and maybe it's not exactly what you'll get, but you'll get better. So feel free um, just to, to come, you know, to stand for a moment over there beside and I'd say a prayer with you so that I can meet you. I have miraculous medals with me. Only one uh, I can give you because um, I, I need a, a, a truckload of them. I'm after doing three missions, with three missions in a row. Now, let me begin by saying this story of Susanna. When you hear it today, you think, what a terrible thing those two men did. What a devious, because of lust or because of hatred, because of her beauty, whatever. And yet we hear in, I'm talking about this present day now, do those things happen today? And do people tell lies about other people? Do people 
uh, get back at people because they're angry at them? Yes. And I'm going to tell you a story before I speak about the Zacchaeus, the little man who met Jesus. But I want to tell you a true story that happened to me here in Ireland some years ago when I was working with Father Kevin. And you know, it opened my eyes, and this is only one of many. Now, all of us here are Catholics, and we know that there was terrible, terrible scandals happen in the Catholic Church, not only in Ireland. We know that um, many scandals happened with the clergy, that there were things that, terrible things, just as in, in the police force, in doctors, all of us are sinners, and all of us have the weakness and the struggles, and Satan knows how to attack. So the biggest target in the Catholic Church, there are two things that Cromwell went after. He needed to kill the priests. He needed to murder the clergy in England and Ireland to get them out of the way because of the power. Not power of earthly power or authority. And this is why I tell Catholics, how foolish, we, I, I was on the Gay Byrne show, I don't know, 30 years ago, and Gay said to me, oh sister, wouldn't you love to be a priest yourself? Look at what you're doing in the world, because I'm doing it over 53 years. I remember looking at him, because I prayed a lot about it and taught the Lord give me insights into the priesthood and the church. And I looked at him and I said, Gay, I said, now would you explain to me how I'm a sinner, that I can stand before God, who is, who is the king of kings, and say to him, you give me your power, I, you obey me when I say these words, you give me the power to make you present in word and sacrament. I said, how can I stand before God? Because it's not a job, it's not a profession, nobody has a right, from the Pope down, nobody has a right to the priesthood, because it's the priesthood of Jesus. So I said to Gay, Gay, the only thing I can stand before God and say I'm a sinner, I can't decide, and it's not, it's not a human decision where we make the decision. God already made the decision, so I said, the priesthood is not about power on earth. It's, it's not earthly power. And you see, this is why Satan hates it. Because, and this is why people who don't understand the priesthood, I don't care who they are, are talking about ordaining women, ordaining men, ordaining... And, and you know, the simple people say, but how could you possibly dictate to Almighty God? What right have I? Well, in these 50 years that I've been ministering worldwide in 100 countries to priests and bishops, I've met many, yes, and I've visited them in prison. I've seen the horrors, the sin, like in every profession. But the biggest thing Satan wants is for us, the Catholics, to carry the stories, to destroy the priesthood, because we then will have no priests. And that's what's happening in the Catholic Church in Ireland, where we have no vocations. Why? It's not the priest who's in active ministry. Now, one day I was down in the south of Ireland giving a parish mission, I'll not tell you where, and the strangest thing happened to me. I'm walking into a church like this, and Father Kevin was uh, about to start Mass for the parish mission. The church was packed. And I did something that I never did before. I walked over to, a, there was a man at the back of the church, just a sports shirt and a jacket on him, and I walk over. I felt something pulling me, like an inner urge to go over. So I went over and I looked at the man right in the face. Never saw him, didn't know who he was. And I looked at him and I said, you know, Jesus really loves you. He knows you and he loves you. And I walked on. And I thought, oh, it's a strange thing to do to some unknown man. So after mass, I came out to go for a cup of uh, tea over to the presbytery. And a car pulled up on the curb, and this man rolled down the window. And he said, excuse me, sister, can I talk to you for a minute? Why did you come over to me this morning? Why did you, you, you say those words? And I said, I have no idea. He said, let me tell you about myself. He said, I'm a priest. I'm an, Amer I'm an, an Irish priest, but I'm in America 40 years. And about three months ago, I was falsely accused. 
and I'm going to have to go to court back in the States. But the bishop sent me home and told me to wait, back to Ireland, wait for the case. My family disowned me because it was known, you know, the media published whether it's true or false. And when, when they're cleared, it's never clear. And he said, I came home, my family told me not to come. They were too embarrassed, they didn't want me. And he said, I was able through somebody to get, I didn't have enough money to buy a place, but he said, a Protestant woman gave me her house for like very, very little rent, if none, if I couldn't afford. He said, I'm not from here. And he said, but you know, in these two months while I've been waiting, I never heard from the bishop in America. I never heard from any of the, the priest friends or the people that loved me. I'd spent 40 years ministering. He was very active. And he said, I was accused by two young men. And he said, it's not true, but I'm not believed, so we're going to court. So he said, you know, sister, I really, I, I was afraid of people knowing me, so I haven't gone out much. But he said, you know, a neighbor that doesn't know I'm a Catholic priest from the area met me and said, you know, Sister Breed and Father Kevin are going to be given a mission in this particular place. You should go, you know. And he said, he knew that we were in a ministry with priests, you know, and that we worked with them. So he said, I came to a point in the last week where I planned to commit suicide. He said, you get to a point where, he said, I was so desolate and so desperate. And I thought, not even God do you love me. I have no... I just can't pray. I'm trying privately to say mass, but he said, you know, yesterday I said, it would be better to die. And you know, the de this is what the devil wants. This is why he's doing this, not only to priests, but to all kinds of us. Because suicide is the easy way out, but it's a terrible offense. It's taken the greatest gift. And it's a despair. And it happens with people who, who are oftentimes, God bless them, addicted to drugs and drink and crime, whatever, but if they only knew, this is the big question, does anybody care? So Jesus, so he said, I said to Jesus, I just would, if I could only know that you love me, that you even believe in me, Jesus. He decided at the last minute he would drive to the church. He came and he sat at the very back. He said, sister, when you walked over to me, I just said to Jesus, Jesus, please let me know. I'm so scared of what I'm going to do. He felt such a strong urge to get rid of himself. And at that moment, he said, you walked over, everybody's in the church, and you looked right at me. When you said those words, it gave me hope. So I took him in, and Father Kevin and the other priest, uh, we had him for lunch. I told come, we're having an afternoon for priests. They don't know you here. And you know, I felt so sorry for him. And so I said to him, Father, when you go back to America, please let me know how you're doing. Two months later, those two men got up and said that they fabricated the story. It wasn't true. Because there would be been questions, like the two in Susanna, and their story contradicted his life completely. And that man, he wrote to me, he said, Sister Breed, he said, please, please pray. Thank you for praying for priests. Because he said, you know, the enemy is going to do everything he can. The same with teachers, the same with all kinds of people in, in the faith. Because once you are, are a witness for Christ, Satan is out. And this is what's happening. So I tell you that story because I was thinking of it this morning when I was reading the story of Susanna. And I meet this I, I, a beautiful teacher in a secondary school, a Eucharistic minister, a great man, taught math in a school, and two girls, because he failed the, exa they failed the exam, put out rumors. He, he lost his job until the trial, and before the trial he died. These are the kind of stories I hear all the time. And that's why I'd say to you, for what Father Pablo talked about, you know, brothers and sisters, Ireland is a great, I don't believe the faith is dying. I believe all it needs is a revival that it's there, but that we're allowing the media, the press, 
gossip, lies, and, you know, people don't go to Mass anymore. In Dublin, you say, no, I don't go to Mass, don't believe in the priest. And I think, my God, here we are with the true faith that, that Cromwell tried to destroy. Here, we in Northern Ireland, I'm from County Armagh myself, here we know the value of what our ancestors suffered and how they tried and, and still people, you know, uh, don't realize, I think, the gift. And that's why I'd like to, in the very brief time I have, to share with you a beautiful story that is very, very uh, uh, appropriate for today too. And it's the story of Zacchaeus. Now, do you know who Zacchaeus was? I'll just par paraphrase. Zacchaeus was like many people. Uh, in the tax business, they're not liked. Who likes tax people? <laughs> you know? And so poor old Zacchaeus, but he was a dishonest tax collector. And he was the tax collector, and the people hated him. He was taking their money and pocketing it. And then one day, Zacchaeus heard about this preacher, young rabbi. You know, everybody was talking about Jesus, the miracles he was performing. And he sat with all kinds of people. He, you know, just like the story of, of Mary Magdalene, of the, the woman caught in adultery. Everybody was talking about him. And he became very famous in the sense that people wanted to see him. They, they wanted to get close to him. It's like in the present day, all I hear, my secretary has six daughters, and everybody talks about Taylor Swift. Everybody wants to go to our concerts, and everybody wants to see her. I go to Spain, they're going to have a big concert. You go to Singapore, Taylor Swift is coming. And I'm thinking to myself, my God, I mean, this girl, uh, pray for her. But... You know, people want to get close to famous people. People want pictures with the Pope. People, but we wouldn't, a lot of people don't want to get involved. They just want to have it to say, well, I met this person. And this is Zacchaeus. He just wanted to meet Jesus. He wasn't a bit interested in changing his life. He was just interested in seeing him. But he had a problem. He couldn't see him because he was too tiny. He was small. But he had such a... A drive to accomplish his wish and you see that's the drive it's not bad we tell children in school you have to be motivated but you know today like running for president running for people will sell their soul they're motivated they don't care what they say and to get into that position the motivation the drive which is often not motivated for the good of their lives and then there are others who have a great motivation, like, like many people who are motivated to give their lives. Well, Zacchaeus, anyway, got up in the tree. And he looked up. He was looking. He was delighted with himself. He was going to see Jesus. <clears throat> and then he'd be able to tell all his friends, I saw Jesus. It's the big deal. But you know, brothers and sisters, Jesus never came to see people. He came to save them to convert them, to love them, to give them a new life. And so what did he do? He waited till Zacchaeus was under the tree, just right, well, he was just right where Jesus was walking under it. And what did Jesus do? He looked up and he said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come on down, I want to go home with you. I want to go to your house. And the people were horrified. He wants to go to Zacchaeus, that robber, the, what, all the names the cop had for him. And what did Zacchaeus do? Zacchaeus didn't say, you know, if some very important person came to you today, who's very important, and said, I'm coming to your house, and you just ran it out of the house to come to Mass, and you didn't tidy it up or anything, you'd be saying, oh, don't come this morning. Can you come another day? Or, you know, how about next week? It'd be much better next week. We, when we look at Zacchaeus, his house was not his house. It's here. This is where Jesus wanted to come. And Zacchaeus came down, and he didn't say, don't come, Lord. He stood in front of him, and he was being criticized all around, and Jesus was being criticized. And what does Zacchaeus do? He looks right at him. And you know, brothers and sisters, conversion is the gaze of Jesus. 
when Jesus looked at Zacchaeus, just as he looked at Peter when he denied him, and Peter started to cry, when he looked at Zacchaeus, you know what Zacchaeus did? He said, this is what he said. He said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus climbed down and received him joyfully. All the people who saw him began to grumble and said, he is going to be a guest in the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus spoke to Jesus. This is what he said. He said, half of what I own, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Looking at him, Jesus loved him. And he said to him, and to all the critics, salvation has come to this house today, for he is also a true son of Abraham. The son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. The first thing Zacchaeus did was go to confession. The first thing the woman at the well did was go to confession. And you know, I visited a lot of prisons and I visited Longkesh when I, in, in, during the hunger strike and all these things, you know, with, um, and just recently I was visiting a prison with Father Pablo in America where in, 19, in the 1970s I went to visit them in death row in this prison in Florida. And would you believe it, there's an old man there. He, he, he wrote, started writing to me and he's now in his 80s and he's still in prison. He wasn't on death row, he's for life. But I went to visit and he got out, but he had terrible addiction to drugs and he got back, killed somebody with another friend, so he's back in forever. Well anyway, he started begging me when I come and visit three hours from where I live in Florida. So recently Father Pablo, the bishop asked me, he said, you know, Patrick is his name. He said, Patrick would love you to come. So I, we went to the prison, and you know, all these years, can you imagine since 1970s, this old man is there, he's now old, but he's ready. And so he said to me, you know, Sister Breach, I got out, but I was lost. He said, I wasn't sorry for the things I did, but he said, today, I'm here now, I'm going to be here forever. And he had a good job, a good profession. It was life went, you, you know, because I, I tell you, brothers and sisters, drugs are the tools of Satan. Anybody, I pray that none of my own, because I have niece and nephew, we have all family members. It is demonic what Satan does with the beauty of our youth and people. Anyway, he said to me, when, when I went there, he was standing outside. I hadn't seen him in years, but he had, right. Writes, and he writes every month to me now, and he sends me $25 of his paycheck that he pay, gets money in, for doing jobs in the prison now, you know, to give them allowance, and he sends it for the ministry. But he said to me, when I saw him, and I knew him, so I went over, and I put my arms around him, and he started to cry, and he said to Jackie, my secretary, he said, when Sister Breach came, I didn't know if she would just shake hands or what she would say to me or do, but he said, you know, I never had a mother because she never came to see me. And last week, he said, I felt so loved that she came and that she put her arms around me and Father, I was able to go to Father Pablo to confession. But he said the following words to me. He said, you know, Sister Breach, people wouldn't believe. When I was out in the world, he said, I wasn't free. I was in terrible bondage of sin, things I did wrong. I have to tell you, one day when I met Jesus in here, I'm freer now and I'll never get out, but I'm so happy. And I sent him the Magnificat. You can only send books, you know, material things. You can't send anything to the prison. It's very strict. But he said, every day I pray and every day I share the gospel with my companions in here, they're all older men. And he said, you know, you mightn't believe it, but it's just like heaven in here because we, I know that I'm safe and I know that I can go to Jesus every day. And the bishop comes to visit us and he said, we don't have mass every day, but I, I tell Jesus, wherever you are, come into me. And I thought to myself, how clear it is when Jesus looked at Zacchaeus, he did the same thing. The, the inner freedom of our faith, what Jesus gives us, 
is greater. And this is why never be afraid, never be afraid to go to confession. Confession, St. Faustina taught us through the mercy, the beautiful teachings of mercy. You know, meeting Jesus in the confessional is a person. The priest is a veil. He, the priest is a sinner. He does everything we do. He is all that. But the moment a priest sits down and blesses himself and you come into that confession, he's not there. Jesus is at the other side of that or sitting in front of you. And the, this is the beautiful thing about it, that no matter how sinful, no matter how bad a priest is, when he exercised these gifts, it, the sin is on him if he's not trying to be holy. But he exercised these gifts. It is Jesus who is so in love with you and me that he will work through, he will come through the promise he made at the ordination of every priest. And you know, brothers and sisters, this is why I say today, people are going to psychiatrists, new age places, psychologists, psychiatrists, I have to say, are very good. And all the, the different ministries that we have in the healing ministry to talk. But you know, the biggest need people have is what we have in the Catholic Church. People call me up and say, Sister Breach, how much does it cost to be paid? The Americans love to ask, how much does it cost to be paid? I say, repentance and believe in the gospel. They say, is that all? I say, if you can do that, you'll be a saint. So that's the greatest gift. And that's why on the first night of the mission, we always have confession. And Father Pablo will speak about it tonight. But, you know, just to finish off with, with a few stories. One was... A priest I worked with, Father Emile Tardif, he was a Canadian. <clears throat> and Father Emile Tardif was one day he, the, the bishop in Dominican Republic where he was stationed, he was Sacred Heart Father. The bishop asked him would he have a, um, an opportunity to come and say mass in the stadium for all the people who were asking because he had a wonderful ministry, especially in the ministry of healing. He was healed himself and had a great conversion with Jesus. Great speaker. So he said that the diocese sponsored, you know, so they put big posters all over the city that on this day in May, they were going to have a diocesan celebration in the stadium and that Father Emile Tardif was the guest speaker and would be the celebrant with the bishop and all the priests. So every place you went, you saw it was going to be a mass and there'd be a Eucharistic healing service. So he said, you know, the bishop called him the day before, and he said, you know, Father Emile, I have a favor to ask you. He said, you know, I have one of my um, uh, st staff here at the Chancery who works for me since she came out of college. She's a mother of four children, the youngest is two, but she's been diagnosed with fatal cancer, and there doesn't seem to be any hope. The doctors don't think that they can, can help her. So he said, is there any possibility that we could take her by ambulance to the stadium and that you could um, pray with her, lay hands on her? So Father Emile said, fine. Your girl's name was Karen. So on that evening that, in the stadium, um, the, the bishop, you know, there was, the announcement was made that um, they were going to pray, they wanted the whole diocese, because all the priests knew her, and they asked the People in the stadium and the, pri the priest and the bishop were going to lay hands. And before it happened, the bishop talked about her, said she was married, you know, and had four beautiful children. She was a daily communicant since she was in college. And he gave the beautiful talk about, and he said, you know, we're going to ask Jesus for a miracle because, you know, God wants us to ask for miracles. So they did. And they prayed with her, laid hands on her, and then she was brought back to the hospital. Now, the whole ceremony was over, and three days later, Father Emile was in his presbytery when the doorbell rang and uh, nine o'clock in the morning. And this woman came in and she asked, she said, could I speak to the priest from the stadium uh, the other night? So um, she was brought in to Father Emile. <clears throat> she looked at him and she said, Father, how is Karen? This is about three or four days later. And he looked at her and he said, oh, Karen, the, she said, the lady from the stadium, which well, said she died yesterday. And she said, she died? And she, he said, yes, God took her home.
But she said, Father, you know, I heard all the prayers and everything. Now she said, I would really like to tell you my life, and I have a very big favor, Father, to ask you. She said, I'm a prostitute, and I run a house, a brothel in Santo Domingo in the capital. She said, I have about 30 girls working for me. She said, I've been in prison. I'm Catholic baptized, but I, I left. I've never gone because I have such a bad life. I started in prostitution, and then I went into the business of you know, hiring them all. And she said, about a month ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. It's really bad. I was afraid to go to the doctor. I was afraid to go. I, I never went to a church, so I, I didn't. She said, I just bore the pain. And she said, it is terrible. It was terrible. But she said, all of a sudden, all these posters started coming throughout the city on, on windows and places, you know, and it was announced in, in papers and everything. And she said, you know, I thought, I can't go. How can I go to the stadium? There's going to be police and, you know, they know who I am. So she said, I was very scared. But at the last minute, I was so bad and I felt so desperate. She said, I'm going to go. So she said, I went, but when I got there, there were the turnstiles where people go in, you know, and the police were, got, were all around the place because of the crowds. And she said, when she saw the police, she got so scared because she had been arrested, she had been fined, she had all kinds of crises that happened to her through her 30 or 40 years, whatever it was. So she said, but I didn't leave. I sat outside the stadium. I, put my, I went to a place where nobody was around and I put my back to the wall and I just sat and I could hear from the speakers what was going on. But she said, you know, Father, when I heard the bishop talk about Karen, I thought, I'm dirty, I'm a prostitute, I stole money, I destroyed young girls' lives. She said, as he was telling all the beauty of Karen, I was being confronted. And it was the devil telling her, you can't, you can't do this. So she said, at that moment, two hands came on her head when they started praying with Karen. And she said, Father, I'm completely healed. And I have 28 prostitutes outside, all of them Catholic. We want to go to confession. He spent the whole day, and today their brothel is the most alive house of prayer, where they're completely ministering to all these people. Now, why do I tell you that? Because, you know, nobody, nobody will ever be rejected. Karen went to heaven. She lived a good life. Jesus came not for the saints. He came to save and give salvation. So you promise the Lord that when you have the opportunity tonight, come to him because he loves you. And I have to get out of this church right now because the man's telling me I have to go. So God bless you, and I'll see you tonight.